friends, it's Kate from Venison for Dinner, and I'm getting started on making a couple batches of mead, which is alcohol made with honey, um, like wine, cider made with honey. So we make this one that's got honeycomb in it, like the cappings from when you extract honey, and I got some of that from a friend who has bees, because we haven't had bees the last year. So I thought I would take you along in making it. As well as I will link to you, we did a live video teaching on making mead on small batch, but we're gonna be doing big batch. So let me show you what that looks like. Water is chlorinated and you can't make ferments with chlorinated water. So this is about six gallons of water. I need more than this, but I boiled this and now it's cooling down. And then I'm gonna, once it's like comfortable temperature then I'm not gonna kill the good things in honey, I'm going to divide it between two buckets. These are seven gallon buckets, I think. My honey is kind of crystallized. So Marius suggested that I start dissolving the honey in warm water tonight. And then tomorrow I'll add the rest of the stuff in that I need for making the mead. In his experience, it can take hours to get the crystallized honey properly dissolved in water. So that I should just start the process tonight so that I'm not rushed and trying to do it tomorrow. Just start it tonight. So, that's what I'm going to do. We figured out that we can precariously perch a big bucket on our kitchen scale. And our kitchen scale can take a lot of weight. Something like 35 pounds. So, I put it under the bucket and zero it out. So, I can just measure right into the bucket. And I don't have to measure into a different vessel first. This stuff is a workout to get out of here. Um, it's kind of crystallized. It's got beeswax to it. Our house temperature really fluctuates this time of year. So I'm getting this started in front of the wood stove and I'm going to leave it in front of the wood stove until we put it into carboys so that it has a nice warm start to it. Marius actually prefers to do mead in the summertime now. He finds in the winter he has to work harder at it to thrive. Whereas in the summer it's just so naturally warmer in here that mead takes off a lot faster. This is what the honey I'm working with looks like. It is completely unfiltered. It's got little bits of wax in it, which actually gives really good flavor to the mead. There's even like the odd dead bee in here, which honestly, friends, this is, I think, the secret trick. Um, you can see like a bit of liquid honey in the bottom, but it's pretty kind of crystallized and chunky. And this is a arm workout to do here, friends. We're at eight and a bit pounds and ooh, our floors need to be swept. Every day they get swept, you'd never know, but we're at about the 23rd and a half hour since the floors were swept, so they're ready for it. I'm aiming for about 10 pounds here, I think. I should look at my recipe. This is a bucket of just cappings I got from a beekeeper. It is kind of bound together by honey as well. You can see as I get down farther, you'll find more honey because the cappings float, the wax floats, but it's still very much mostly just wax with a little bit of honey to it. I've got them both fairly dissolved in honey, the honey and water. I could actually almost proceed right now, but I need to make dinner. This one has less honey, so it will be less alcoholic. This one has more honey, it will be more alcoholic. Um, I need to add in some tannins. I'm going to use black tea for that. I'm going to use a black chai tea because I really like the spices in it. It worked out well last time. Use some raisins for some added yeast. The honey and comb has lots of yeasts in it, though. I tell you, that was a workout. Next most important part of starting a batch of mead is that I get out our handy dandy mead recipe book and I take notes on anything I'm doing. This is the rule in our house. When you make mead, you have to make notes. I'm 
using organic raisins as my yeast and Marius thinks you only need to add a handful of them or like 10, but I add a lot more. is obviously still pretty hot but because I get stirring it right away I'm not worried about it killing the good stuff in the honey all it did was warm up my ferment a little bit Two to three times a day you need to stir your mead to aerate it to help the ferment take off and you can do this with a big spoon or you can get a paint mixer on a drill and really get things going. So all it took was about two or three days and this was ready for the carboy. As you noticed we don't add any commercial yeast to this recipe. Sometimes we do depending on what mead we're making but if we're making something that's got lots of its own yeasts going on then we don't bother. If we're making something like with store-bought peaches that we know are from they're not organic and so they're sprayed the amount of yeast they have left on the skin is less and so Marius likes to add a yeast. He uses a champagne yeast and it helps make sure things take off. Non-sanitary hillbilly process, yeah. Well, considering I have dead bees in it. So we know the fermentation has taken off because when we move aside the dead cappings bees. and the wax and dead bees, you can, you can, can I do this right yeah, now? Okay. Right. You can see bubbly action, right? Those foaminess. And you can hear bubbles popping, so to speak, which is fermentation happening. This is normally just a one person job, but with the cappings, they like to kind of bung up. So it's better if there's someone on hand to help you get the funnel unstuck. Maybe there's a wider funnel out there that would work better, but not that we're aware of. And this is one we already had, so we'd rather just make use of what we had. I got this batch started and this is technically my batch of mead, but I didn't even have to ask Marius for help. There was no way he was letting me lift these big heavy buckets. My hips really don't need that right now. We might add a bit more water, but we're gonna see how this behaves because you need a certain amount of head space because sometimes it'll come out the airlock. So we're gonna see what this does before we add any more water. This 
good at the moment. Yeah. It's good. It's still spinning. Once it clumps up. Don't force too much. I'm not. I'm taking the tiniest little bit at a time. Just to make it not lock down. Thanks for watching friend. I'll be sure to include the recipe notes for what I did in the video description below. So if you want to get your own batch going, you can try it out too. I'm going to be honest with you. Once we got it into the carboys, the fermentation kind of halted. And so we ended up taking the airlocks off and just covering it in a coffee filter with an elastic. And once or twice a day, Marius stirred it with a long spoon and within a couple days, he could tell that it was happy fermenting again. Often, if a ferment like meat is not taking off like you want, it just needs a little bit more oxygen to get going. So now it's bubbling. Because it's not really warm in our house, it's not a super fast ferment, but it's fermenting. And I can't wait to show you the rest of this come summertime when it's time to try it and bottle it.